Close your eyes for a moment and let your mind wander back to that enchanting era of television when black and white screens conjured dreams of an era far removed from our own. In the midst of the mid-60 seconds, a bewitching series graced our living rooms, casting a spell that still lingers in the realms of nostalgia. I Dream of Genie, a show that beckoned us to explore the captivating world of magic, wishes, and the undeniable charm of its titular character. As you journey down the corridors of your memory, perhaps you recall the first time you stumbled upon the whimsical adventures of Captain Tony Nelson and the enchanting genie, who emerged from her ornate bottle with a blink of her mischievous eyes. The comedic escapades, the delightful misunderstandings, and the quirky camaraderie between a mortal and a genie of these were the ingredients that wove the tapestry of this timeless classic. But there's more to this beloved show than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, I dream of Genie holds a treasure trove of intriguing trivia and fascinating anecdotes. It's a world where the famous Genie Blink wasn't always as magical as it seemed, where real-life events intersected with the show's plot lines, and where the characters' personalities took unexpected turns. Join us as we peel back the layers of this beloved series, unveiling the hidden gems and quirks that make I Dream of Genie a show worth revisiting. Get ready to discover the unexpected, and remember why you fell in love with this whimsical world of wishes and laughter. It's time to delve into the random facts about I Dream of Genie, where reality and fantasy intertwine in the most enchanting way. I Dream of Genie trivia, cars and colors in the 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie. There were some interesting details that might have gone unnoticed by viewers. One standout fact is about the character's choice of cars, and another is related to the show's transition to color broadcasting. First, let's talk cars. In the series, all of the characters drove Pontiacs, except for the general, who had a memorable moment in the series finale when he drove a Cadillac convertible. Tony, the main character, mostly drove blue convertibles, but there was a change in the final season when his Bonville convertible turned metallic green. Roger Healy, Tony's best friend, had a pale yellow Pontiac Firebird 400 convertible, and Dr. Bellows, the ever-suspicious NASA psychiatrist, started with a Le Mans wagon and later upgraded to a Bonville hardtop. It's a curious detail how these cars became part of the show's backdrop. Now, for an interesting piece of television history, I Dream of Genie holds a unique place. It was the last television series to be broadcast in black and white on NBC. At the start of each episode, the iconic NBC peacock would unfurl its colorful feathers accompanied by a harp, flute, and soft horns playing. The announcer's voice would declare, The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. This signaled the network's transition from black and white to color broadcasting. These quirky facts about cars and colors add a distinctive touch to the beloved show I Dream of Genie, reminding us of a bygone era of television. Behind the smoke and magic of I Dream of Genie in the 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie, a show that captivated audiences with its whimsical premise, there are some intriguing behind-the-scenes facts that shed light on the making of this iconic show. The enigmatic smoke effect during the first season of the show, while it was in black and white, the special effects team had a challenge to create Gina's iconic smoke effect. They used a screen overlay of billowing smoke, sometimes mixed with animation, to bring Genie out of her bottle. When the show transitioned to color episodes, they experimented with a purely animated smoke effect. However, as time went on, a more practical approach was adopted. A live smoke pack suspended on a wire, was used to lift Gina's smoke-filled bottle, adding a touch of magic to the production. Emmeline Henry's double role, before taking on the role of Amanda Bellows in the series, Emmeline Henry made a guest appearance in the first season episode titled Is There an Extra Genie in the House? In this episode, she played a magician's assistant, showcasing her versatility as an actress within the same show. The bottle's surprising origin, Gina's fancy antique bottle, where she recited when not granting wishes, was no ordinary prop. It was actually a decorative Jim Beam liquor decanter, originally containing Beam's Choice Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. The bottle received a makeover from one of the show's art department employees, who adorned it with gold leaf, turning it into the iconic vessel fans came to associate with the show. These fascinating tidbits offer a glimpse into the creative ingenuity, and resourcefulness behind the scenes of I Dream of Genie. 
From the evolving smoke effects to the dual roles of cast members and the bottle's unexpected origin, these elements contributed to the show's enduring charm and lasting appeal. Barbara Eden's transformative hair in I Dream of Genie in the iconic 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie, Barbara Eden's enchanting character, Genie, sported a mesmerizing mane. Many wondered if her luscious locks were real, and the answer is a mix of real and faux. The show's rapid costume changes required creative solutions, leading to the use of various wiglets, hairpieces, and hair falls. Barbara Eden's real hair was styled in a neat French knot at the back of her head, with bangs cascading forward. The magic happened when the different hairpieces were pinned over this base. Her famous genie ponytail hairdo, a symbol of the show, was a composite of three distinct hairpieces. A faux ponytail, a braid wrapped around her cap and two side-swept pieces tucked under the braid to conceal the pins. As the show progressed through its seasons, Gina's hair evolved. In the early seasons, her flip hairdos barely grazed her shoulders. In later seasons, they extended down to her back. These transformations were all thanks to the use of these false hair falls. According to Barbara Eden's interview on the Wendy Williams talk show, it took a staggering three hours to complete her intricate hair and body makeup. In the first season, her own hair was so short that the genie hairpieces were practically nailed on to achieve the signature look. The ever-evolving coiffure of Genie added a touch of magic to the show, captivating viewers and making I Dream of Genie an enduring classic in television history. Gina's diabolical look-alike sister, Genie 2, a brunette with a green harem dress, was created by a former Bewitched writer, James S. Henderson. He was fired from Bewitched when it was discovered he was writing for both shows at the same time. In the world of 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie, a surprising twist emerged behind the scenes. The character Genie 2, a mischievous counterpart to the beloved Genie, was brought to life by James S. Henderson. What makes this fact intriguing is that Henderson was previously a writer for the popular show Bewitched. However, his dual commitment to both Bewitched and I Dream of Genie eventually led to his dismissal from the former. This behind-the-scenes drama added an unexpected layer of complexity to the world of classic TV sitcoms. Henderson's involvement in two iconic shows at once became a unique footnote in the history of television writing, underscoring the competitive nature of the industry during that era. As fans of I Dream of Genie continue to enjoy the timeless adventures of Genie and her look-alike sister, it's worth remembering the behind-the-scenes story of James S. Henderson, the writer who dared to juggle two magical worlds at once. And there you have it, a lesser-known fact about the 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie, where creativity and competition collided behind the scenes. Stay tuned for more intriguing tidbits from the world of television. Of television television. In the 1965 TV series I Dream of Genie, there were strict rules in place to maintain a wholesome image. Barbara Eden's navel, for instance, couldn't be shown. Her costume had to have an extra layer to prevent her legs from being seen through it. When Tony and Genie were in the bedroom alone, the scene had to show one or both of them leaving, and Gina's disappearance had to be shown as smoke. Also, Gina's bottle was never allowed in Tony's room. These rules aimed to avoid any improper implications between the characters, even subtly. According to Sidney Sheldon, the show's creator, NBC initially wanted to film the first season in black and white, as they doubted its longevity. To cover the extra cost of color filming, Sidney Sheldon offered to pay $400 per episode out of his own pocket. However, Screen Gems executive Jerry Hyams advised against it. As a result, the first season was filmed in black and white and later colorized. Barbara Eden, who played Jeannie, has mentioned in recent years that her chemistry with Larry Hagman, who portrayed Tony, was unmatched. She noted an effortless connection and rhythm in their acting unlike any other actor she had worked with before or since. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the unique behind-the-scenes aspects of the beloved 1965 TV series, I Dream of Genie. In Cocoa Beach, Florida, there was a frozen yogurt shop called I Dream of Yogurt, based on the show. They played episodes of the show in the shop. This sweet tribute to I Dream of Genie allowed fans to savor frozen treats while enjoying the whimsical adventures of Genie and Tony. The shop served as a nostalgic hotspot, letting patrons relive the magic of the show right alongside their frozen yogurt. It was a unique way for fans to connect with their favorite series in a fun and tasty way.
Unveiling hidden stories of I Dream of Genie, a behind the scenes look I Dream of Genie, the iconic 1965 TV series, continues to enchant audiences with its magical premise. However, behind the scenes, there are some intriguing stories that shed light on the show's production and the challenges faced by the cast and crew. Larry Hagman's battle with addiction, while I Dream of Genie brought joy to many, its leading man, Larry Hagman, grappled with personal demons. Hagman, known for his role as Major Tony Nelson, was a longtime alcoholic. Shockingly, he admitted to being drunk during the filming of many episodes. Barbara Eden, who played the titular Genie, revealed in her 2011 autobiography, Genie Out of the Bottle, that Hagman openly acknowledged his struggles with drugs and excessive drinking throughout the show's run. Hagman's candid admissions have left a lasting impact, underscoring the challenges that lurk behind the whimsical facade of the show. The mystery of Barbara Eden's navel, one unexpected revelation comes from Barbara Eden, who portrayed the charming genie. She disclosed that network executives and censors initially had no qualms about her navel being visible. However, a seemingly innocent comment during the third season changed everything. It was mentioned that her navel occasionally peeked through when her costume's waistband shifted. Following this casual observation, a new requirement emerged. Barbara Eden's navel had to be discreetly covered up. This trivial yet interesting tidbit highlights the meticulous attention to detail that went into maintaining the show's decorum. A subtle bewitched jab and a quirky turn of events, I Dream of Genie featured an episode where Tony and Roger worked with a chimp named Sam. This seemingly harmless addition carried a subtle message. It was seen by some as a playful jab at the show Bewitched. Allegedly, this was in response to accusations from Bewitched producers who claimed that the Genie writers had borrowed ideas from their show. The naming choice of Sam appeared to be a light-hearted retort, showcasing the friendly rivalry between the two popular sitcoms. I Dream of Genie remains a beloved classic, but these behind-the-scenes stories add depth to our understanding of the challenges and creative decisions that shaped the show. Larry Hagman's struggle with addiction, the curious case of Barbara Eden's navel, and the subtle nods to rival shows all contribute to the rich tapestry of I Dream of Gina's history. History, 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 history. As we bid adieu to the enchanting world of I Dream of Genie, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the magical journey we've embarked upon together. This 1965 TV series, a timeless treasure, has woven itself into the fabric of our lives, sparking joy, laughter, and a touch of whimsy in every episode. Perhaps you've found yourself lost in the playful banter between Major Nelson and the mischievous genie. Or maybe it's the iconic bottle and the promise of three wishes that still lingers in your imagination. Whatever it is that draws you to this show, it's undeniable that I Dream of Genie holds a special place in our hearts. Now, I encourage you to share your cherished memories and thoughts about this beloved series. What were your favorite episodes or moments? Did you ever wish for a genie of your own? Or did the show inspire dreams of your own magical adventures? Your stories and reflections are like hidden treasures waiting to be discovered, and they contribute to the rich tapestry of our collective love for I Dream of Genie. So, let your thoughts flow freely, and let's celebrate the magic it has brought into our lives. Thank you for your time and your unwavering interest in this classic series. Your connection to I Dream of Genie is a testament to its enduring charm and the timeless allure of a bit of magic in our lives. Warmly.